Hi, I'm Tom Hollingsworth of Tech Field Day, and I'm here doing an interview with my friend Scott. Scott, say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. Scott Robon. It's like putting a robe on. Silly, but it works. Now, Scott, you're uh, you're you've done a lot in the networking industry over the years. Tell everybody a little bit about what you've been involved with. Yeah, I've just been one of these fortunate individuals to have a career that really grew up with the commercial internet. Uh, got thirty plus years as an internet plumber. Uh, started out pulling cables and uh, putting vampire taps on coax Ethernet. Um, worked my way through uh, a job at a carrier, uh, Bell Atlantic, way back in the days of the R box. Um, got really interested in training, then being a tech engineer. I went to the dark side as a uh, as an SE and then an SE leader. And uh, in this current act of my career, I've moved into independent consulting, and that's allowed me to engage in really interesting networking, security, AI, and other related projects, and to do things like be a co-founder of the Network Automation Forum. Awesome. Well, it sounds like you've had a lot of experience with uh, various technologies and networking. So I wanted to ask you, where are we with data center networking? I mean, it, it's, it's a big thing where there's a lot of stuff going on. What's working? I mean, what's not working? What, maybe give us a little bit of background into that. Sure. Well, number one, demand is high for the foreseeable future, whether that's going to be standard, you know, Ethernet based interconnect and then whatever's happening and evolving in the AI and GPU interconnect space, which is largely infinite band today. But we're going to see increasing penetration of Ethernet there, too. Um, so that's a pretty exciting thing in the data center space, um, especially with GPU interconnect. One of the interesting things with data center networking in particular is architectures have really stabilized. Um, spine leaf is everywhere. Yes, there are variations on a theme, but there aren't a lot of people out there trying to reinvent the networking architecture for data centers. Um, that's an interesting uh, stabilizing feature is the best way I can put it. And then you've seen the increase of white box hardware and other NOSs into data center equipment. Um, that's bringing costs down. You know, we can use the C word commoditization, but that uh, stabilized architecture and reduced cost of equipment um, is bringing different dynamics to the whole data center infrastructure environment. I, I would totally agree with you. And I think that, it, you know, we talk about the fact that things kind of feel the same, right? Like you, we're all kind of using roughly the same switches. We're all kind of roughly using the same architectures. That's a good thing. Um, it wasn't until Henry Ford kind of, uh, you know, stabilized the way that cars were made that yep. we actually got the Model T that was a mass reproducible vehicle that we could then focus on what to do with a car as opposed to building a car. And I could even say the same thing about the Apple II versus the original Apple computer. It wasn't sure. until it was on an assembly line and could be made reliably by people who were not named Steve that we could actually do that. So it's it's valuable to be able to do that. And it really kind of helps with things like network automation too. Um, For sure. And and being someone who's heavily involved with the network automation forum, I, I, I feel I'd be remiss if I didn't ask the question because there's a lot of people in the industry who kind of feel like automation and AI are basically going to kill off all of the network engineers out there. And I don't necessarily know that I agree with that, but I also think that it's a really popular opinion. Put on your your future shades, you, you look into your crystal ball, who do you think is going to end up being more right in that discussion? Be careful that the crystal ball isn't a palantir. There isn't something looking back at you. Um, so I think the first very honest thing to do is state out front, there probably will be an impact, um, whether that's on some jobs shifting, certainly requiring people to skill up and uh, acquire new skill sets. So I think number one in this conversation, that just needs to be acknowledged. Um, however, it's not the first time this has happened. I'll invoke your your Model T uh, production line and automation that's gone into automobiles and other, other products, right? We've seen this cycle in so many times in different technologies. And what usually happens is where jobs might get reduced in one area, it creates jobs in other areas, like the machines don't fix themselves yet. Um, so there are you know, things that need to be due from a, a network automation perspective in terms of keeping the tooling uh, up to speed, learning new skills, whether that's just individual scripts you know, written in Python or, or Go to broader orchestration and thinking more end-to-end -end 
and about dependencies between tech domains, right? What if we could orchestrate what's happening across network, compute, storage, you know, all from a nice and tidy service portal. So this is a disruptive industry that it was disruptive before any of us got here. It will continue to be disruptive. If, if we're not ready to sign up for that disruption, we're probably in the wrong space. So uh, there's a lot to chew on there. Anything you want to pull on in particular? No, I think that you've you've done a really great overview of of why people are kind of leery of that. I mean, ultimately, I've I've said in in many times in the past, you're right. Somebody's job is going to get taken, but somebody's job always gets taken, whether it's the janitor or the network engineer or the CEO. And the question is, is that what are you going to do to be ready for that? And my favorite analogy is when uh, robots were being introduced to uh, automobile manufacturing. Um, the, the people who were defensive said, well, a robot can never do my job as well as I can. Uh, the people who were visionary said, well, the robots are going to break eventually. So why don't I learn how to fix the robots? And those people still have jobs. And it sounds to me like, you know, kind of having that vision for what's going on in the industry is a very valuable skill to have, because when you see what the future holds, um, you can kind of skate to where the puck is going, to, to borrow the, the analogy. Uh, and one of the ways that we're doing that, Scott, is that you're going to be joining us for this very special event we're doing, Networking Field Day Exclusive with Nokia. It's going to be happening on September the 24th. And I wanted to ask you, what has you the most excited about Nokia's future in the networking space? Well, I think more competition in an environment is good um, uh, ahead of any vendor name or vendor logo. Um, Nokia has a great IP products division. They've done some lots of things that just don't don't get the attention that others seem to do. Uh, maybe that's marketing. Maybe that's some other combination of factors. Um, you know, we've seen multiple vendors reinvent their operating systems, and Nokia has certainly done that with us. Our Linux. They built it from the ground up to be very automatable. And, uh, you know, having had direct interaction with them on this uh, over the past couple of years, I think it's I think it's really promising. And they have the ability to enable end users to have automations ready from day one, just based on what they're doing with SR Linux. Yeah, I would totally agree. And, and sometimes it's that you have the superior technology or even very good technology. It's just a matter of making sure that people are aware of that. And that's one of the reasons why we're doing this special event with Nokia is to make sure that the audience of Field Day out there knows what Nokia is working on and what they're going to be building on for the future. And, you know, simplifying things like network operations, network automation, and more. So make sure you tune in on September the 24th. If you want more details, head over to techfieldday.com and click on the link for Networking Field Day Exclusive with Nokia. You can get a lineup of all the delegates, including Scott, who will be joining us there, as well as the topics that are going to be discussed. Make sure that you uh, make a calendar appointment for yourself because you're not going to want to miss any of that great presentation happening during the day. Now, if people want to learn a little bit more about some of your history in the networking space and some of the cool things you're working on, Scott, where can they go to find that out? I think the single point of contact is LinkedIn. Um, I write for different places and uh, almost always repost to LinkedIn, whether it's Network Automation Forum, whether it's some pieces for Nanog and other outlets. Um, I, I usually make sure it ends up on, on my page in LinkedIn and my, my DMs are open to um, reach out. I'd be happy to interact with anybody who has questions. Outstanding. And if you want to learn more about what we do here at Tech Field Day, make sure you head over to techfieldday.com and take a look at the events that we've got going on there. Scott, I'm really looking forward to seeing you in September with Nokia. Until then, take care of yourself. And for everybody out there, make sure you tune in for all this great event. <laughs>